just the pure fundamentals of how do you go, how do you stop, how do you turn, and how do you shift. All that stuff is stuff that you could very easily, maybe not easily, but you can definitely do that within a day of riding. The, the method that I just showed you is how I would teach any of my friends um, or people in my life to learn how to ride who've never ridden before. What it do, squids? It's a kind of chilly April day. We got the boys out at the lot. Um, I thought it would be kind of a cool idea to do a video on how to ride for, you know, I don't know, anybody who wants to know how to ride or they're interested or whatever. Let's see some pop-ups. Ooh! Ooh! Can you stop me better than you can wheelie right now? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy, dog. For some reason, I feel more comfortable going this way than going this way. Oh, well, I, I mean, at least you're on. A, at least you're not on a big bike. Yeah. If you flip a big bike, you're fucked. You know. Yeah. The repetition. I feel like as soon as I go too far, I just slam my butt back down and it falls back down. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like so light that it's like it's easy to control. You know. So, you want to learn how to ride? It's so rudely interrupted. I'm just kidding. Riding is super fun, and I think a lot of people kind of overcomplicate it a little bit, especially yourself when you're learning how to ride. And there were a ton of things that, like, everybody says in the videos, but, you know, they, they, everybody's going to tell you the basics. You know, if you've never ridden before, and it's how you, oh, you know, every, every bike is different, and which is true. All these things are true. Every bike is going to feel different. Every bike is going to have a slightly different clutch release. But essentially, you have your clutch, your shifter, your throttle, your front brake, and your rear brake. Your brakes are separated. And then when you're with your shifter, it's not like a car. It's just sequential. It's, it's, so you're going to have one down, then neutral, then five or six up you know depending on on your gearbox uh or maybe just four up before you even like start the bike and try to go just sit on the bike because every bike is going to be different you might be on a on a big old 450 which i wouldn't recommend learning on or you might be on something lower you might be on a street bike like this you might be on a grom but just sit on the bike and just see where your feet kind of feel and just play around with the weight a little bit see how light the bike feels pop it there we go that's crazy to me homeboy got stoppies better than he's got wheelies but just sit there and feel out the weight of the bike a little bit you know that way you feel comfortable rolling this thing back and forth and it's not as as intimidating right because you get on it and it's you know the bike's on and you're just kind of like oh shit you know you don't know how to plant your feet and you you instinctively want to just plant your foot there and make sure that it it doesn't move and that's a big no-no especially when you start rolling you know you kind of want to be able to be loose on the bike and when you're shorter on a taller bike that's harder to do but it's still not impossible especially if you just understand the weight and the ergonomics of your bike so once you kind of just get comfortable just sitting here rolling back and forth essentially if you don't understand how a manual transmission works all bikes are manual transmission with the exception of like i don't know some weird honda 70s but basically your clutch all this thing does is disengage the power from the engine to the rear wheel so when you pull this clutch in you're going to be disengaging all of that engine to the actual rear wheel and then when you let it out it's slowly going to apply that uh that power back to the ground so with that being said 
Remember, your front brake is gonna be here, your rear brake is gonna be here. What I recommend doing is when you start, have your rear brake, have this foot on the rear brake. You don't have to be on it, but just be covering it and have this foot on the peg. You want your left foot down generally, unless you need to get over, put it into gear. But I always just prefer to have it like this. That way I can have my foot on the brake and I know that the bike isn't rolling anywhere. Because if the bike starts to kind of tip over on you or roll backwards, you can save yourself with that brake a little bit. So we're gonna turn the bike on. The bike's gonna be in neutral, right? So once again, neutral is one up from, it's, it's a half a click up between one and two. Um, some bikes is really hard to find neutral. Some bikes it's not but you'll kind of get the feel of it. So essentially what we're gonna do, remember we've kind of felt out the weight of the bike a little bit. We have our left foot down. That way we're kind of we're kickstanding the bike with this leg so that we can, we don't want to have both feet on the ground and then try to go because your body's gonna instinctively want to pick a side and just plant your fucking body on the ground. You don't want to do that. You want to be fluid and move with the bike. So, like I said, we're going to have our rear foot up and then we're going to go shift, right? So we're going to switch, clutch in. Okay, now we're in first. Once you're there, okay, I want you to just literally take the clutch, no throttle, and just be ready to use that rear brake. This front brake is very powerful, okay? So you can use the front brake, but if you stab it, you're gonna slip your front rear, or your front rear, you're gonna slip your front, you're gonna wash out, and it's gonna be a bad time, you're gonna go that way, the bike's gonna go that way, and pancake. So, we're in gear, we're in first. Now literally just sit there, and just let the clutch out a little bit. The bike's gonna start to pull you a little bit, a little bit more, and remember this whole time, I'm kind of moving my feet like you would push a skateboard, right? but except I'm not pushing. I'm just being light with my foot, okay? So as the bike moves, my foot's gonna move with it, okay? And you're gonna feather that clutch out. Just literally sit there for a couple minutes until you can feel that clutch. Now, as you can see, when you start to let it out too far, the bike's gonna die on you, right? If you dump it, the bike's gonna die on you and you're gonna stall it. It's a little nervous to stall it, but it's okay, it's part of learning, it's not the end of the world. You'd rather stall it than, you know, whiskey throttle and shoot off that way and kill yourself. You're not gonna kill yourself, but it, it would not be a fun day. I wonder if those guys are pissed off that we're inside or that we're out here. We're good to be here? Hell yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> huh, okay. Um, what was I saying? Okay. So once the bike is in first, right? You just feel that clutch out a little bit, okay? Remember, we're just kind of slowly moving our feet with the bike. You don't wanna plant your foot on the ground because then when the bike starts to roll, you're gonna panic and you're gonna fucking dump the bike over, right? So you just wanna let it out a little bit. And then once the bike starts to kind of die on you, right, you hear it start to chug, that's when you start to add a little bit of gas, okay? And by little bit, I mean a little bit, not that but just a little bit and every bike is going to be different especially if you're on like a small little baby bike versus you know a, a bigger bike like this versus a 600 or a 1000 whatever by the way start on a smaller bike it will help you tremendously you're going to sit there and just let it out a little bit and then slowly add your gas and now you're moving and see once the bike started to move, I brought my foot right back up to the peg. You don't want to be hanging your foot off on the ground. And now we're moving, okay? So now we're going straight. And then all you got to do is pull your clutch in. That's going to disengage power from your, uh, from your engine to your rear wheel. And just slowly get on both brakes and put your foot back down. Okay? That's, a, that's all it is. It is not too bad. Turning gets a little, a little shaky. Let me see something. Gotta slow down a little bit. Pop it! Hell yeah! That is 
not good for this tire. We're going to turning now, because turning is is where things start to get sketchy. But that's the basic, the basic thing that you're first gonna do when you learn to ride. Just go in a straight line. When you wanna stop, you're gonna pull your clutch in and just slowly get on both brakes. You don't wanna stab it, especially this front brake, because it's more powerful than you think. Okay? Just slowly apply the brakes. And then remember, when that clutch is in, that bike isn't going anywhere because you've disengaged power, right? But what if you're in gear, okay, and you wanna let go of the clutch? Well, if you dump the clutch, you're gonna stall the bike. So all you gotta do is hold your clutch in and put it in neutral. Sometimes your bike might be hard to, to find neutral, so you might have to roll it back and forth a little bit and then try and click it into neutral. He's getting there. What's homeboy doing? Another thing, when you are letting that clutch out, do not dump your, uh, or do not have a lot of gas, because that's how, that's how you wheelie. And you're just learning, so you don't want to do that quite yet. Woo. Okay, but all this stuff comes with time, and this is literally just, just the fundamentals of learning how to ride. When you're, you're in a parking lot by yourself, day one. Or probably better idea not to be by yourself, but you're in a parking lot, okay? We're not talking about street riding or, uh, you know, stunt ride etiquette or anything like that. Or group ride etiquette, just, just riding and getting the fundamentals down, okay? So now, you should be at a point where you should be comfortable to put your bike in gear, slowly let the clutch out, and just go for a minute, and then stop when you want to. And just feel those brakes out a little bit, okay? Now we're in gear, we put it right back into neutral. Now you can just chill here. You can turn the bike off, whatever. When you wanna learn how to turn, turning is what gets a lot of people, right? That's where you're gonna dump your bike probably the most when you're learning. So w once you start going relatively straight, you should be kind of comfortable a little bit, just, just getting the swervies a little bit. You can kind of feel what it's like to corner but not make a full U-turn, right? Now in your MSF or whatever course you're taking, they're gonna teach you how to do this and you're gonna have to be able to do it within a set number of parking spaces. And I'm referring to it like a, a U-turn or whatever. So we got this semi trailer coming up here. Okay, we're going straight. Instead of just stopping and trying to turn around, I got the clutch pulled in, right? And I'm just coasting with the bike, okay? Once I'm at the apex of that turn, you're just gonna give it a little bit more gas and just keep going through it. You out of here, bro? Okay. All right, cool, bro. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you, homie. Hopefully, I'll see you this weekend. Yeah, bro. Ride safe, guys. Y'all we'll be in the video. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good. Later, buddy. Hey, later, man. Ride safe, guys. Okay, so turning. Okay, we're going in our straight line here. We got our hands ready, okay? Your rear brake is what's gonna come in handy with turning, okay? So if you need to make a turn tighter than you're expecting, because at first you're gonna take your turns really, really wide because you're uncomfortable leaning the bike over and then you're gonna get to a point where you can just cut it. And then when you can really cut it, you know, you can start to have fun with it. Usually if you're right-handed, your, uh, your right-handed circles or turns are gonna be worse than your left-handed ones. Um, but this is also where counter steering comes into play. Counter steering is, it's uh, overcomplicated, but it's actually very simple. In, sim in the simplest terms, counter steering just means that the handlebar that you push on is gonna be the direction that you wanna go. So I'm gonna push on this left handlebar, that's where I'm gonna go, okay? It's not, it's not like a car where you're gonna take your steering wheel and you're gonna turn that way, right? Because if I, if I try to do that, the bike doesn't really want to go that way, right? But when I actually want to turn the bike, okay, you need to make a tight turn, whatever, or, you, or you're gonna make a wider turn. You don't even, if, especially if it's a wide turn, you don't even need to necessarily pull the clutch. You just be very gentle with your throttle. And just coast through it. I'm not using my rear brake. I'm not using my clutch. I'm just kind of leaning with the bike and I'm just pushing on the handlebars, 
okay and it's and it's not a heavy push it's just push on it just a little bit and you'll feel it you know oh my balls jeans are riding up So you can see, once you kind of get comfortable, you can really cut these turns and just kind of carve through the pavement. Should be at a point now where, okay, you're sitting on the bike, you're comfortable, you're ready, you're in neutral. Okay, we got both feet kind of on the ground. You don't have to have both feet. I recommend having your, uh, your right foot up instead of your left foot up, because then you have access to your brake if you need it. And then when you want to put it into gear, boom it's in gear now we kickstand back onto this hand or this leg not actually kickstanding with the kickstand but just supporting the weight of the bike with this leg and then we're just going to slowly kind of take off okay now we're going going straight i'm going straight no clutch no rear brake i'm just pushing that's it and you want to lean with the bike okay you don't want to be a, a stiff you know in line with the frame well, I guess you do want to be in line with the frame, but you know what I mean. You just want to lean with it, okay? Even if you're not pushing on the other on the on the handlebars, right? I'll I'll do this with no hands to show you just what I mean by manipulating your body weight. And this is all going to come in time, right? Okay, so we're moving. I have no hands on the handlebars. Don't do this when you're learning. But as you can see, if I just push my weight this way, or I want to lean this way, you know, you're that's that's the area you're gonna drift, you know. So that's kind of the basics of just starting, stopping, and doing slow speed turns. The next element is shifting, right? So shifting, uh, okay, there's up shifting, there's down shifting, and there's rev matching with your downshift, which is slightly more advanced. You're probably not gonna get it on the first day. It's kind of weird um, to learn. There's al already a lot of information you're learning. So when you wanna shift, right? Okay, we're in first gear right now. So if you're unfamiliar with how like a manual transmission works, okay, when this, when your revs start going up, right, you're diminishing power, okay? But then I upshift, and then I reset myself back down. And then you have access to that power band again. That's how you get going faster. Now, if you're in too high of a gear, and you try to go slow, okay, you can kind of hear the bike chugging a little bit, but we're moving along at idle. Now, if I cut it, no gas, Okay, I do have my idle up, so that's, but it's it's struggling, right? Now, if I put it in first and I do the same thing, okay, it's gonna chill a little bit more. I do have my idle up, so that that's kind of beside the point, but basically that's how that works. So let's say you wanna shift gears, okay? All you're gonna do is cut your gas, pull the clutch, click up, and then let them both out, okay? And it's not its not a slow motion necessarily, but like, it it's all just, it's gas clutch, or gas off, clutch in, and then shift. Remember to turn your gas off. Um, that's one thing I, I see a lot of people do when I'm like teaching them to learn how to ride, like my friends or whatever. They'll just keep the gas and then do that it's just not good for your bike. Let's say I want to shift a second. My foot's ready to shift. Boom. It's, ve it's very simple. You don't have to feather the clutch out the way that you do just from a, from a stop. Because you're already rolling, right? So. So it's, it's really all about time. I'm getting shit in my fucking eye. Jesus. Got windy all of a sudden. So that's upshifting. Now you're gonna have to downshift. 
the simplest way to do this, the simplest way, not the most efficient, but the simplest way that's gonna be easiest for you to learn is, okay, we're in third now. All you gotta do, you wanna slow down, clutch in, and then you're just gonna click down to the gear you want, you know? So now, and you can click up, but I wouldn't recommend doing it, you know, a lot, unless you are comfortable with your bike and you kind of know where the power band is gonna hit based on how fast you're going or whatever. That's upshifting and downshifting. It's very simple. It, it's gonna feel kind of weird at first, just like everything you're doing, because everything you're doing right now is gonna feel weird at first and it's gonna take you a little bit to learn. But once you get the muscle memory down of just, it's very simple. Okay, and then you wanna downshift, clutch in, boom. Now, here's what's gonna happen if you just let the clutch out. The bike's gonna kinda chug you forward and it's not great for the, it's not great for your clutch, not great for your bike, not great for your engine. So the way to kind of counteract that is called rev matching. The, the reason that's happening is because your RPM versus the speed of your wheel aren't close enough. They're not matched. That's a rev match. I was able to downshift without that kind of chug forward. At the time when I pushed the shifter down, I gave it a little bit of gas, okay? So the RPMs were already at a point that would match the speed of the wheel. Okay, I'm in fourth, I wanna shift down to like second. All I'm gonna do is clutch in, and then when I push the shifter down, I'm giving it a little bit of gas. When you downshift too, you also get a really cool sound from your engine, so that's always fun. Matching is something weird to kind of learn how to do. But once you get it, once you once you feel it, because you'll feel it, when the when you downshift, the bike's gonna make a nice, beautiful little sound, and you're not gonna get that that chug forward. Okay? All it is, all I'm doing is I'm gonna I'm pulling the clutch in just for just for a second. I'm pulling the clutch in, and as I click down, I'm giving it gas. So there's gonna be gas. You're gonna be going up in RPM as you click down, if that makes sense. I, I hope I'm explaining that in a way that is comprehensible. But that's basically the basics, okay? So, at this point, you should be at a point in the day, or the week or whatever, where you can, you're comfortable enough taking your bike from neutral in a position like this Understanding your clutch, your brake, your your front brake, your rear brake, okay? You should be able to just go clutch in first, take off from a stop, have having both feet on the pegs. Again, you don't wanna be, you know, walking it while you're moving any faster than like just a very slow rolling speed. And then you should be at a point, okay, we're, we're going in first. Now we wanna make a nice little turn because we have this thing here. So remember, we're just gonna counter steer just by pushing on the, just by pushing on the grip. It's very simple. I didn't even use, use no clutch and no rear brake. Again, if you wanna make it tighter, okay, you can go clutch in. Now you're just coasting. There's no, there's no actual gas. Okay, we're gonna make this real tight. But let's say, let's say, oh, I don't have enough power to make this turn. I'm just gonna let it out a little bit. And when you wanna make it even tighter, so you have a little bit too much speed to make it as tight as you want it, then you're gonna, you're gonna feather your rear brake just a tad. And you can make it as tight as you want. Okay, so that's what we have starting from a stop. We have turning, now we have shifting. Okay, so you're going good, you're in first gear, but you got plenty of space ahead of you before you need to turn. Remember, we're gonna speed up. Boom, up shift. Now we're in third, okay? We gotta slow down a little bit, so we're gonna slowly apply our brakes, and then clutch in, 
down to first. Okay, and then we can apply more brake to make this turn. And there you go. So all that stuff is stuff that you could very easily, maybe not easily, but you can definitely do that within a day of riding. Just a day. You can get all those things down. Maybe not rev matching. Rev matching takes a little bit more understanding of your bike and of your engine. And it's a little bit more finicky. The, the, it's really just the timing that you have to get right. My problem with rev matching that I always used to have was I wouldn't, I'd give it gas too late or too early so that when I actually pushed down on the shifter, there was no gas being applied. I had given the gas and cut it before I actually made the shift. So it's something that takes a little bit of time. You're not gonna be like perfect day one or anything, but it's, it's definitely doable to kind of at least get just kind of the basics down. And you're probably gonna practice those few things for a good while before you get comfortable and start to advance to you know taking corners at higher speeds or making tighter turns or whatever you know but hopefully that kind of gave you just a quick explanation of how you do that shit i remember the the first day i i learned how to ride i mean it took me like an hour or two just to just to get the clutch feather out so everything i just the, the method that i just showed you is how I would teach any of my friends um, or people in my life to learn how to ride who've never ridden before. It's just getting comfortable with the weight of that bike and not being too afraid of it because this bike will humble you very quickly, but it's, it's just having that calmness and that smoothness to go, okay, this is how the bike feels. This is how I feel on the bike. You know, this is where the weight moves a little bit. This is where the clutch starts to engage right but it's just it's just sitting there with that feather for a little while okay so you're gonna do each of those steps a couple times and then you'll very quickly realize you know how it feels because the way i learned i started and, and everybody told me just just give it gas and slowly let the clutch out and not not a lot of gas but you know just slowly let out and it's and it was this movement that kept fucking me up because i didn't understand the clutch first it's so much easier to understand this simple movement between the two, you know, when you already know where your clutch starts to engage, because then all you got to do is give it a little bit of gas. I thought I'd make this video because I taught my buddy how to ride the other day, or we just had a little session out here where he was doing all the things I was just showing you. Some of these things would help. Again, this isn't like, you know, all, all the tips and tricks but just just the very basics of how to literally just ride the motorcycle not how to keep yourself safe on the street not how to corner very fast none of that just the pure fundamentals of how do you go how do you stop how do you turn and how do you shift and that's once you have all those things down then you can kind of advance those and you're going to get better and better and better over time it's just building that muscle memory, just like a lot of other things, you know, it's like, it's almost like playing an instrument, right? You're just getting that muscle memory and that feel of the bike down. And then you're good to go from there. You could do tons of different things. You could go into, you know, fast sport bike riding. You could go into dirt riding. You could go do like trials, weird, uh, you go do like trials, MX stuff. You could do stunting, you could do whatever. I hope you guys found this useful. I don't know. Um, there's plenty of videos on, you know, how to ride in five minutes, but but this is just how I would teach somebody to do it, and I think that it's a decently efficient way of learning how to ride in an afternoon, you know, or or a couple of hours or less, you know, especially if you're just a quick learner and you take it slow. So yeah, if you found that useful, um, you know what to do: like, subscribe do whatever share this video um but yeah i appreciate it i'm gonna go do some more wheels or something and go home uh but peace out guys you got booty on you we gotta work on this she got the freshie 
Watch, this thing's gonna be all ground down on the left side only in like two weeks. I give it two weeks. Squid shit, boys. Uh. It is still recording.